Music Marriages. And we're back today to talk about our topic of the week, which is the fourth problematic communication pattern in a five-part series where we're really looking at the top most common losing strategies that couple use. And these have been identified by Terry Reel in his book called The New Rules of Marriage. And if you want to see the other three that we did, you can just search losing strategy in the feed, um, you know, to the left and you should, they should pop up if you are interested in the others and you have not seen them. But today we're going to be talking about losing strategy number four, which is a especially toxic pattern called retaliation. Um, and this is pretty straightforward, like most people know what retaliation means. But in relationships, sometimes it's not always totally above board, right? It's not always conscious. And it's sometimes harder to detect. It can come up in like really insidious, sneaky ways, um, really subtle. So we're going to get into what that actually means in relationships, what it looks like. Um, so you can become self-aware um, around this pattern if it's something that you're doing or if you suspect that it's something that your spouse is doing. Um, and then really the ultimate purpose of this discussion with the three of us today is to support you guys in becoming more self-aware because we all have blind spots and it's really the awareness of recognizing, oh, these are my patterns, this is what I'm doing that help us, you know, that's like half the battle of getting there to be able to actually make those changes. Right. So um, if you can see us and hear us, go ahead and drop a comment below and let us know. Um, and feel free to ask questions throughout. I will do my best to reply if I can either during or after this live stream. So for today's talk, we're going to talk about what exactly retaliation is in a marriage, how it shows up in our dynamics, and how can we recognize it. We're going to talk about exactly how it hurts your marriage, like what is particularly damaging about it, and then what you can do instead. Because it is sort of a really human impulse to want to retaliate. So, it, you know, it's not about just repressing it and ignoring it. It's really about looking at it and coming up with alternative ways of communicating what's behind it. And we're going to talk about that, too. Um, so the first thing that I just want to mention when we look at what retaliation is, is to acknowledge that this way of coping is really a big part of our culture right? An eye for an eye. It's very much embedded in our culture, as are some of the other losing strategies as well. It's so natural to want to get back at somebody. It's so ingrained in us. It's ingrained in our justice system, this idea that, you know, we need to, you know, justice is about evening the score and hurting somebody back, essentially, mm -hmm. um, even if it doesn't always consciously show up that way. But no matter how it feels, right, no matter how strong the urge it is in a relationship, in an intimate relationship, it's not healthy. No. And there's nothing that harshness achieves that loving firmness can't achieve better. So we'll look at that in a minute or at the end, actually, about what loving firmness is instead of retaliation. But when we talk about retaliation, what we're essentially talking about is revenge, right? It's really yeah. wanting revenge. Yeah. So how does this, what does this exactly mean in the realm of intimate relationships? Because it's not just as simple, right, as like, you know, no. their tires. A great, there. a great uh, definition for um, retaliation in marriage is perverse and unreasonable justice. And um, this is done by both men and women um, in very overt, direct ways that can seem really harsh. And um, they're also done um, in ways that are very covert and very passive aggressive as well. Yeah. So we'll be getting into all of those things. But basically, it's um, also the, it's nasty. It's the nastiest and yuckiest uh, losing strategy in my mind. Um, and usually it's resorted to um, after the first three uh, strategies, uh, losing strategies don't work when they fail. So um, in my notes, I wrote down a good example of this. Um, and it's, so you can't admit that I'm right. You won't let me control you. You don't care about my feelings or give me what I want. So take that, you know, since, you know, you hit me, I'm going to hit you back twice as hard and you deserve it because I'm your victim and right. you made me feel like shit. So yeah. here you go. And um, it's basically yeah. offending from the victim position. Um, yeah. People yeah. who use this see themselves as victims. So 
that sort of gives an overview of sort of what it is. Um, and um, also, I will say that it's so yucky um, that it also accounts for like 90% of the world's violence. Um, you know, that, that position of I am a victim, like I'm going to hurt you back. I mean, terrorism um, lives here. Um, it's just really perverse stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, Domestic yeah. violence too comes from this idea. It's like trying to, you feel so hurt and wounded that the only way to redeem yourself or to be made whole is to really hurt that other person. And that's kind of taking you to the extreme once it enters the realm of violence. Yeah. 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 And in the moment, <laughs> Um, it may seem justified, right? Like when someone hurts you or hurts someone you love or any of those things, it may feel justified to retaliate mm -hmm. and back and strike back, but it's not the way to go for no. reasons that we get into. Um, but it's just not the way to go. Um, it doesn't serve our highest good at all to go there. Mm -hmm. It's not in alignment with who we are as people mm -hmm. and um, you know, Terry Real has a really great thing that he says in, um, you know, throughout all of his trainings and everything he said, some version of him, babe, help me if I don't say it correctly. Um, but he's talking about the U.S. Penal Code and how... Um, um, yeah, essentially, he, he's just saying that uh, be, because... Um, Something oh, there's nothing that harshness. You said it already, Monica. Yeah, there's he did. That harshness um, fixes that loving firmness can't fix better. And he's like, that's a great message for the United States Penal Code. Like yeah. you don't make a criminal um, or someone who's got that much anger and ferocity inside of them um, to calm down or um, change or become a better version of themselves and heal through harshness. More violence, yeah. 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 And he also says it's understandable because, you know, how of the culture. You know, he says he understands why people do it, but it's just, it, it's very adverse in terms of like right. trying to yield the result that you want. You know? That's right, right, um, exactly. And it's almost like, I mean, it's human. It's in the sense that it's a way of, it's a primal way of trying to stay safe, right? Yeah. Um, we want to, it's like offense is your best defense yeah. and it's a way of protecting ourselves on a yeah. prime level. But the degree to which we can transcend this toxic pattern is really the degree to which we can have a healthy relationship. Exactly. And you have to be able to transcend this very primitive human reaction in order to have an evolved conscious relationship. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I mean, that's true for all of the losing strategies, but I would say even more so for this one, right? Because this is the most overtly damaging, I think. Yeah. And, I, and I'd and i also say that, you know, for the guys, and, and we talked about this earlier, but, you know, at its core, you know, the guys usually fear, have the fear of not, you know, being good enough, you know, in terms yeah. of when, when they're spoken to in this way. So, mm -hmm. and so they, they feel that, you, you know, you, what you feel is you, your self image takes a, a really hard hit. And naturally for guys, you know, we're just, we have the propensity to lean more towards the defense rather than like considering what you're saying, if you're trying to uh, hurt us or not, you know, intentionally, you know, we just kind of well, lean right into perceived hurt, a perceived you, you, offense. It might not yeah. even be like, it wasn't even a f offensive or it wasn't meant to be that way, but if exactly, you're hurt, yeah. that's all it takes. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you just pull that trigger. So that's all we need a lot of times. Yeah. So. Yeah. So how does this show up, you guys? What, how, I mean, there's lots. I want to kind of give some examples so that people listening can really recognize all of the different ways that this can show up. It's not just slashing someone's tires. It's not just physically assaulting somebody. It's, it can be in really subtle ways, like with communication, for example. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, well you, you said you were going to say, but with, it, with communication, it can show up in terms of like somebody, if you ignore me, I'll ignore you. Yeah. Or yeah. if you, you embarrass me, this is, you know, especially if you embarrass me, I'll embarrass you in front of everyone else also. Or, I, or I'm just going to throw, toss your dirty laundry out here, just like you toss mine out, you know, because it's so mm -hmm. insensitive when you have, you take some, something that someone has confided in you 
in terms of like sharing that information with you and you choose to go, you know what, I'm going to put this right in your face mm-hmm. and I'm going to call you out about it. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. naturally the other person is going to put the other person, um, they're going to feel very hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, it's tit for tat, isn't it? Yeah. Regardless yeah. of what it is. It's very insensitive, you know. A lot of tit for tat. Yeah. But like an example, you know, sometimes there's verbal examples of like, if, if our spouse says something to us that we take offense to, that we will lash back with something twice as bad to kind of retaliate against them. It could yeah. be a verbal thing like that, or it could be um, withdrawing. It could be nonverbal. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I'm working with a couple right now where um, there's some anger and resentment on the husband's part and feeling like things and affection and connection are on his wife's terms. So when she makes bid for connection, he's not open to it or he's kind of shut down around it. Yeah. And he gives off, he communicates non-verbally that he's irritated with her um, to hurt her feelings, not even consciously. It wasn't even conscious at first, but with some exploration, he realized he was actually retaliating against her because he felt like it had always been on her terms. And he didn't, he was trying to even the score in terms of having power in the relationship. Right. But it was really subtle and it's sometimes hard to put your finger on. Like, why are they not looking at me? Why are they not talking to me or touching me? What right, yeah. It's it can be passive aggressive too. Yeah. Yeah. And some a way that it shows up a lot that I've seen. Um a lot from women. Um I hear this all the time from women on calls that I do with clients that I work with. Um, because a lot of women will offend from the passive aggressive victim stance when their husbands aren't showing up in the way that they promised, right? Mm -hmm. Like women take the vows and on the wedding day very, very seriously. And it's like all the promises that you made to me, you know, you promised to be there for me. You promised my life would be better when I get with you. You promise you're going to provide, protect, and yeah. you know, just show up as this king, right? And um, a lot of women have resentment around yeah. that, that around that when their husbands aren't showing up um, in the ways that they promised, right, on the wedding day. And so a lot of women will just keep it to themselves, right? They'll just hold it in, and they'll hold it in, the contempt, the resentment. Mm-hmm. And it's instead hurt. they might yeah. be really hurt and disappointed and it's not even coming out and he yeah. not really know. And yeah. they'll just hold it in instead of being very direct and very firm coming from that place of the wife, the lover, you know, um, instead of coming from that place and saying, look, I need this from you. I want this from you. Mm-hmm. you know? um, this is what I need. Yeah. You, you promised we're doing this thing together. Um, you gotta step up. You so know? how would she? Well, how do you think that that shows up the most in terms of retaliating if she's not communicating it? Right. So it can be very passive aggressive a lot of times. So women will a lot of times retaliate and um, withhold. You know, um, withholding sex. Withhold yeah. sex. Yeah. Um, they will. Um, and I, well, and adversely. You know, they'll withhold their energy. They'll withhold their joy. Um, yes. Well, adversely, if they, if they if the women withhold sex, the men oftentimes what will retaliate, right? And well, what? Well, they'll hold, withhold re- affection. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and I mean, it just it, it turns into this doubling down uh, cycle, you know, uh, and it just creates a demise because that's all you're doing. You're just stacking negative cards on a deck that's already very negative yeah Yeah. exactly it is kind of a vicious cycle as so many of these losing strategies are yeah Yeah. another really obvious example is an emotional affair or a sexual affair Mm -hmm. outside of marriage you know it can be a form of retaliation either because if your partner cheated now you feel like you need to even the score and make them feel how bad you felt and you're going to go have an affair right. Right. or if you find that you know your spouse isn't available to you emotionally you feel like you're missing out on their love and you're really lonely and you want to hurt them back you might strike up a, an emotional affair at work yeah. um things like that can be retaliatory not even on a conscious level 
And exactly. not they always are, but they really can be. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like, you know, sometimes people, you know, clients that I work with, it's like, you know, I felt like, you know, I deserved to, you know, have that in my life. You I know? get a pass. I get a pass because yeah. of all you do to me. Yeah. 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 It's so many it's, different levels to it. And I, and in in a lot of the conversations I have um, with a lot of the clients, I I know for the women it shows up because it 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 seems that it builds up over time because the the ladies don't say anything, and this is something that begins to you know stew in them, and ultimately, <laughs> this is how it shows up in terms of going. You know what? I'm tired of you not listening to me. Mm. You know, for example, um, you you may ask your husband to give you a, in this way. <laughs> yeah, you, you may you may ask your husband to call you when you know wherever he gets where he's going, and um, it may start out that way where he does it, but then all of a sudden he just kind of doesn't feel the need, you know. And since he's not doing that, you and you're not saying anything to him about it, <coughs> he's just not going to do it any further, and that begins to stew in you and you're just like, okay, he's not concerned about, you know, letting me know that he's safe or what have you. And so that you build resentment around that. And so yeah. the next time you go somewhere that he's home with the children, you might do the same thing. Yeah. So I'm not gonna call you, you know, forget you. You don't think about totally. me. You're not considered forget you, you know, that's such a great example. Yeah. And I yeah. want to say too that <clears throat> so many times when these things are going on and, and there's retaliation happening and, and um, a lot of times when you've got retaliation in the picture, that very much is a cycle and two people will retaliate with one another um, in, in their w different ways. Um, so much of it is because men especially and women also, um, they have a hard time communicating. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do it properly. Right. And so it causes a lot of issues and communication is a skill that must be learned, you know, um, and marriage today has very new rules around communication, which is what we teach inside of the program so that people can actually begin to talk to one another and get through these, these um, hurdles so they stop the endless perpetual cycle of communication FDM, which yeah. is like to call it. Yes, yes. I just wanted to acknowledge we have some comments and questions here. And I want to just say, you guys, we are going to get to those at the end of the call. Um, so keep them coming if you have more. Um, but I won't be able to respond live right now. But at the end of the phone call, I'm going to try to, I'm going to look yeah, at them and try to answer yeah. them, all the three of us, as, as best we can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of um, what how this hurts the relationship. I mean, it's pretty clear, right? It's pretty obvious how this is damaging because it, it really, um, it takes you out of, out of integrity with yourself, of course, right? It's not, you're not being your highest self. You're not serving yourself and what growth that you're committed to. And the people that are inside, you know, that are on this page that are in the community with us, you know, if you're listening to this, you're seeking healthy, authentic relationships. You're looking to evolve and grow and change and transcend the conditioning. And if you resort to retaliation, you're working against what your ultimate goals are and you're reducing yourself to a really low level, right? It's it's pretty self-sabotaging and self-defeating. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't get you anywhere. Obviously, that's why it's called a, a losing strategy. Yeah. But uh, it really takes you out of that positive to negative ratio, right? There's always problems in a relationship, but the yeah. positive to negative ratio, that five to one that people need to have uh, positive to negative doesn't mean that you have no negative. Notice it's not it's not zero negative. It's it's five to one. There's going to still be a, a, a percentage. What yeah. is that? That's right. 20 percent. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you can expand the positive so much and, and have enough positivity between you, then those problems that never get solved, yeah. they're so marginal that they cannot take you down. Yeah. When you engage in this losing strategy, you really get your ratio skewed. Like it, it puts so much negativity and it drains any positivity or goodwill or generosity that you have between you down to zero. If yeah. you imagine it as like an emotional joint bank account, it just yeah. gets drained right down when you engage in retaliation. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. It's and, just a bad strategy. It's yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, sometimes it can even lead to a, a depressionary state on one of the spouses, you know, because if a person yeah. has been trying to communicate in a way that they, they, they want you to understand where they're coming from, and they don't feel like they're being heard and they turn to a, a retaliatory tactic, mm -hmm. it's pulling them out of their, their natural character. Yeah. Of showing love, being supportive, validating you. They become the opposite. It's like bringing the worst out in your spouse. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. yeah and and in, in, in doing so, if you once you begin that that process and you lose that that part of yourself, it's very saddening. It, and it's very weighty. And that's what that's why I said it's, it can almost also lead to a very depressed state for you also. And you get to a point where you don't even really want to effectively communicate with this person because you don't care anymore, you know, and that's saddening in and of itself. And um, and, and when you when you have this vision or have had this vision of what you want your relationship to look like and you see it crumbling before you, it's disheartening. Yeah. yeah, it's very sad. It's you know? hopelessness, right? Yeah. But yeah. it hurts. It just hurts. Like when you retaliate, even if you feel justified, the hurt that it causes is really hard to get over. Yeah. You know? it's yeah. Really, you're adding so much pain that makes it, if what you're really wanting is to improve your relationship and you feel like you're struggling and you want to turn things around, if you allow yourself to continue retaliating, then in the, what you're really doing is obviously, like I said, working against what your goal is, but you're making it so much harder. You're just adding, stacking negativity and hurt and wounds that that probably won't ever totally heal. Right. Yeah. Some of the yeah. things that are said in the heat of battle when you're retaliating and you're really trying to get someone back and you're hitting below the belt, those are the things that carry scars. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the and you never forget. And yeah. you'll know that you participate, and this is this is a hint. This is a um, a trick um, to see to, for you to know. Do I participate in this? Really? Did, do um, do I use this um, method of retaliation as um, one of my strategies in my relationship? And you'll know because I feel like I'm lagging a little bit. Um, yeah, um, you'll know because it this strategy has a fair amount of fuck you to it, yeah. and yeah. everything. And because everything is intention, everything is energy. The energy that you put off to your partner is the energy that's going to be mirrored back to you. Mm -hmm. If the energy you're putting off to your partner is confusing or manipulative or it's going to be back. Nasty, so yeah. if the intention behind, you know, what you're saying, what you're doing to with your partner is fuck you in any way, you know, that is revenge. That is retaliation. That's the energy of negativity. Mm -hmm. If you notice that in a passive aggressive way that you're doing or a more direct mean, like, verbally abusive way that you're doing it it's 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 retaliation and it's a big no-no like just shift out of it when you feel yourself in it and you feel the energy is like uh, yeah just go take a step back and take a break take some breaths and um we're not able to always come into this like magically positive rainbow place you know mm -hmm. but you can definitely calm yourself down enough to be to become the master of your emotions, take control of your emotions, and revisit it later after you you calm down. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's a it's a low vibrational place to live. Really low, um, and it just you know the the lower it gets, the lower it gets. Yeah, the is when you start to turn that around and you pivot, and you resist the urge to retaliate, and you resist the urge to succumb to these losing strategies, you end up on a positive trajectory that ends up feeding its own self. So you can have that reinforcing um, spiral going upward in the right direction of bringing out the best in each other. Right. So a lot of times kind of moving into what the solutions are and what to do instead, a lot of times it's simply a matter of recognizing that you're doing it and just having zero tolerance within yourself to allow it to happen. Now, sometimes it happens faster than people even realize if it's really ingrained. 
The second you feel hurt, you lash back twice as hard. You might do it before you even realize that you're doing it. Right. But if you have any awareness in the moment of like, I really want to say this to this person. I really want to get back at this person. I really want to <clears throat> engage in this retaliatory behavior. And you have any um, amount of awareness of it. Just don't let yourself do it, no matter how hard it is. Like it might take Herculean effort. It might take like it's everything that it, you know, all of your willpower to not let that out. Then if that, that means you have to go take a walk or go take a time out or go call a friend or listen to some music or do something else. Just stop, you know, just zero tolerance to allow yourself to do it. And you can even for yourself, if you feel like your spouse is doing it, zero tolerance for them doing it to you and recognizing this is retaliation and I don't have to stand for it. Like I don't have to be here for it. Um, call it out and then step away if you feel like that, if calling it out isn't enough to defuse it. Um, cause they might be open to recognizing it and go, Oh, I'm glad you called that out. Uh, let me try that again. I'll do it differently. Right. But yeah. if you call it out and it still keeps going, you don't have to put up with it. You can, you can draw a line on that because you don't want to engage it. <clears throat> no. You don't want to try to, once somebody's that triggered and they're engaging from that intention, it's usually really hard to turn it around and it's about setting really good boundaries for yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Terry, Terry was uh, in a training I saw one time and it, he had actually one of his therapists pose that question about how do I, you know, he, she was one of those people who just automatically just, you know, knee jerk, yeah. yeah, just came right at you, you know, and he was like, the biggest thing you can do and learn how to do is just shut up, mm. shut yeah. up, and, you, know, you know, just don't Zip say anything. Yeah, <laughs> just mm -hmm. learn, learn. Just practice that. That's it. Just not reacting, set. leaving yeah. them that gap. Is that's yeah. great? I know. Yeah. Easier said than done, right? It is. Um, it it, it is. definitely takes practice. Yeah. And one thing that I think that helps in terms of preventing things from getting to this point, even where you do want to retaliate, is learning how to express your emotions verbally yeah. and without blame. Yeah, yeah. To be able to express yourself, the, the solution is to express yourself with loving firmness. And like you said, Kelly, really just express what is it that you need? What is, or what is it, what is the feeling that you're having? Where is the hurt? What does it mean to you? What do you need to hear to yeah. heal from it? Do you need an apology? Do you need them just to understand that what they did hurt you or impacted you? Um, practice communicating that. So you can like release the pressure valve a little bit because if you just keep quiet and let it and stew and let it build and build, one day you will blow a gasket. Yeah. yeah. Retaliate in a damaging way. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and that that leads us to another. I what I recall at some point uh, when Kelly and I were having issues a while you know a long time ago. Um, what I wasn't doing, and I'm I'm going to say this because I know I, I know a lot of men deal with this. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to listen. Mm. You know, I really had to learn how to listen intently from a loving space and really validating how she felt mm -hmm. because that's all she was expressing. I, you know, I, I so I had to kind of get my ego out of the way of, you know, where I felt like she was attacking me and mm -hmm. actually consider her, her feelings around what she was uh, conveying to me and truly try to put myself in her place and understand why she was feeling the way she was feeling. Yes. And when I began to do that, it changed. It really began to change the whole dynamic of the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, we became we begin to communicate very lovingly, very supportingly mm -hmm. and um, and very effectively. You know, so it, it, I have to say that because I know a lot of men get, you know, their challenge to, mm -hmm. to uh, find that space, you know, based on this old system of that, you know, we've been raised around where we just kind of really disconnect from our emotions. And I'm just saying, I'm, I, I encourage guys to really try to reach out and dig deep and really try to find that space because it will make a huge difference um, in the way that the relationship dynamic plays out in terms of communication, intimacy, mm -hmm. all of it begins to show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. This deep listening from a place of empathy. It really, it softens and prevents you know, the damage caused by all the losing strategies. Oh yeah. You mentioned that in every single one, right? Owning your part and also really deeply listening, but especially with this one. And I'll say, it's true that perhaps men are, have a special challenge with that because 
they've been more traditionally disconnected from their emotions, right? Or because they tend to want to fix things rather than just like listen and connect and hear and like empathize and validate, which is something that women are taught to do more than men are. Right. Um, but I think that as a culture at large, I feel like we all have a hard time really listening. Yeah. So, so many times, you know, and I think I'm a good listener, but sometimes I still will jump to conclusions and operate from that or go right into, well, let's reframe that or fix it instead of just really listening, right? Yeah. Expressing curiosity. Yeah. And, and letting it. It's hard for everyone in this culture. But we're a soundbite culture with a three, three second attention span. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Listening yeah. and then letting it land. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not having to respond so quickly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, let yourself feel it. That's what deep mm -hmm. listening is it's taking it in. And then letting it land mm -hmm. and sink in. Mm -hmm. if yeah. you, 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 hearing something, hearing someone, womp, womp, okay, whatever. You have to really listen with the intent to understand and let it land. You got to let it go in and, and mm -hmm. process it and go, okay, from their point of view, with all the shit they've been through, you know, um, is what they're saying makes sense? What What are they, you know, you have to process it. Yes. And exactly. really get where your partner is coming from. Mm -hmm. so. Because when you're in a state of deep connection that comes from that kind of listening, you're not gonna want, have an urge to retaliate. Because mm -hmm. you're, in a, right. you're in a loving place, so why, why retaliate? So there's nothing, there's no hurt to retaliate against. Um, so it, you get a lot of bang for your buck from the listening. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, but yeah. um, also the thing you want to do is get the support that you need. You know, if you right. are if you're struggling with this and let's say you get what we're saying and a lot of a lot of people are like, I get it intellectually, but it's really hard to do it in the moment. If you need support um, and you want to understand how to transcend these losing strategies and put this into practice in your relationship, I invite you to book a call with us. Um, you talk to one of us and really what we would do is just look at your relationship, look at what are your losing strategies? How do they play into each other? How do we, what, what needs to happen? What are the steps that would need to be taken to reach your goals, depending on what your goals are. And if we can help you, we will let you know. If it's not something we can help you with, we'll let you know that as well. Um, but if you're like on the fence and you want to explore that, you can just book a call at monicahoyt.com forward slash talk. That's monicahoyt.com forward slash talk. Um, and I also want to make sure we have time for live questions really quick before we sign off because Nora, I'm not sure if you're on, but you said, what do you suggest as a correction you are clear the partner still does not correct. And I wasn't sure what you meant by that. So if you're still with us, can you clarify? Or do you feel like you guys know what she means on that? It's, could you, no, could you say one more time, uh, Monique? I didn't act exactly oh, understand. Oh, you can't see it. I'll click it so you can see it. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. So what Nora? Do you suggest, what do you suggest as a correction? Like a correction in terms of Correcting mm -hmm. your partner, mm -hmm. or your maybe the correction to an alternative to the retaliation. Yeah, if that's the case, I would, you know, like we've said before, you if you're gonna if if your partner is coming at you in a volatile way, the best thing you can do in terms of wanting to make sure that you effectively communicate with that person, if if you're getting triggered, you definitely don't need to respond from that place. OK, so you're going to have to take the time to, you know, evaluate how you're feeling at that moment so that if you choose to say anything, you want to make sure that it's going to move the conversation in a positive direction, first and yeah. foremost. So, I mean, so you really have to stop and you really have to consider and think about what's going on, your emotions, your feelings around what's going on. You may have to step away, you know. Yeah. It just really depends on what's going on, you know. Exactly. Like the partner still does not correct. Like uh, as the I way think I know what you mean, you guys. I was just thinking more about it, and I know not correct the behavior. You know, well, I think no. what she means is, what do you do if you if you uh, what if I think she might mean, what do you do if you suggest something as a correction, and you're clear, but they still don't correct. Like if you're trying to do some, you're making a suggestion for your partner, and then they're not responding to your suggestion is that okay. what you're asking nora 
Right. If that's the question, what do you do if like you're making a request and you're yeah. like, I want something, I really need this in our relationship and they're not responding and they're not doing it. They're not hearing, they're not meeting you. You're not, they're not honoring your request. The, those are the times where we tend to want to retaliate. So that's a good question. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, if you're not going to do that, then I'll, I'm going to get back at you, you know, and, right. and my love or whatever. Um, I, what's okay. the answer to that? Go ahead, Kelly. I was just going to say, when you suggest a correction, right, with your partner um, or anything, you know, around making things better, it, really pay attention to what is the energy behind um, your request? Mm -hmm. What is the energy behind it? Are you really in this mindful place of um, making a request in the right way, coming from that place of love and like really wanting to fix things and work on things? Are you triggered yourself in the moment? What's the energy coming from behind the request, right? Because again, everything is intention. And so you just want to, I just want to make sure I say this because this is so nuanced and many times, especially as wives who have anger and resentment and contempt build up over time of years of this kind of stuff going on. I know for me personally, I have to be really conscientious about where I'm coming from when I say anything or I'm making a request. So um, sometimes and the reason I say that is because if the partner still doesn't correct, well, why aren't they correcting? Where was your energy when you made the request first mm -hmm. of all? If it was coming from a place of true love and intention, good intention, and your partner still doesn't respond, still doesn't correct, um, then I would highly recommend getting help, getting a mediator, getting a coach, going, getting a therapist who's really good um, at what they do and they know what they're doing to help you guys communicate in a way that you're not able to. Um, it would be, it would really involve bringing it back up again in healthy ways and looking at yeah. what's behind that. Yeah. If it's coming from a loving place and they're not, they're still not meeting you there and it's a really important thing for you, then that requires another conversation. Yeah. Um, and then that's a boundaries issue of like, well, what will I tolerate? What will I not tolerate? Is this a deal breaker? Is this not a deal breaker? Um, does, right. my, does my spouse need extra help if there's barriers within them to maybe they right. have good intentions, but they're struggling with something else? You know, it really depends um, on the situation. But I think that that's such a good question because that is the situation that most often would precipitate the urge to retaliate. So yeah. I'm really glad that you raised that. One last question, um, Minerva asks, you know, if I, or says, it, it, I guess this is a comment really, if I point out a negative side of him, he'll go straight to pointing out the stuff about me, right? That's, That's that. exactly a retaliation. So, yeah. we, you know, it, it's just not helpful. No. But again, if, if how you're communicating is, talking about the negative sides of someone that probably isn't the the most successful approach it doesn't mean that they have to retaliate though right no there's no need you can still choose to retaliate but you'd probably have better luck communicating whatever if there's something that you're noticing about your spouse that's negative not in a critical way but in a turning a complaint into a request would yeah. be what be, i think yeah. it's like you know the way i would say it is you know maybe do you realize that you know you do this like mm -hmm. you may not even be aware honey that right you know, that's how you're doing it are you aware like i'm serious like i'm coming from a place of love like you know are you aware that you do this because mm -hmm. you know this happens quite a bit you know and yeah, so and once again if it's coming from a good place <clears throat> it's a lot easier to yeah. hear where the person isn't feeling like oh i need to now tit for tat and I need to retaliate against them and show them all the negative. That's just another defensiveness maneuver. Yeah. That's that's, what you can mitigate. That yeah. might be another really great topic to talk about in another live stream, I think would be defensiveness because that's kind of linked with this one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Well, that's it for us today for, for this topic. I just want to say thanks for coming and listening and tuning in for those of you that came live and for those of you that are going to listen later. We will catch you next time and be sure to um, post your questions below and we will follow up with you. Have a good rest of the day. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Guys. Bye.